This is a movie about a girl and her dog who she falls in love with. But in real life, the actors met on this set yeah. and got married. You can find love in the strangest places, even making a terrible movie. <laughs> We've done a lot of movie nights. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I've ever been this confused by a film. <laughs> Not since Neil Breen, at least. And it also has aspects of The Room and Birdemic yeah. kind of in there. <laughs> Particularly Birdemic 2, since there is an element of like self-awareness with one part of this movie, oh, where yeah, the yeah. rest of it is not. I wish you could talk to me. I broke your favorite glasses. Well, before we get into that, I should explain to the audience, this is the movie Love on a Leash. Mm. How do you describe Love on a Leash? Um, it's an experience. <laughs> yeah, we're certainly not the first people to cover this. This is an infamously bad movie and it deserves the reputation. Mm. So in broad strokes, <laughs> This is a movie about a girl and her dog who she falls in love with. And it's a Gone romance. Gone too far. Is there a not too far when you're romantically entangled with your dog? I don't think so. I'm not sure you can say they didn't go far. If you just loved your dog as your pet, okay, but it's gone too far as this movie. You have to kind of piece together what's happening in this movie. This is another case of a director whose language is not English first and foremost, so there's a lot of translation issues. There's just issues with, mm -hmm. in general, her amount of filmmaking skill. You're my husband, a human. Yeah, the awkward dialogue that's also reminds me of like Troll 2 where they were told, you know, stick to the awkward script. You can't change anything. And you can't piss on hospitality. I won't allow it! The director of this movie is a woman named Fen Tian and she uh, was born in China. She obviously speaks English but not as a first language. She was in her 70s or late 60s when she made this movie and she wrote the script originally in Chinese and then paid someone to translate it and then would not let them change the dialogue. I didn't know that your husband was so handsome. You must come from an educated family. Mm. Obviously some things happen along the way that are not yeah. part of the script. <laughs> I'm a dog driving in a car. Yeah, 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 yeah. One voiceover. He was allowed to do whatever he wanted, it seems like. <laughs> yeah, okay. So they made this movie, um, I think... From what I have heard, the idea was to make it some sort of fairy tale type thing about like this love that endures through decades, throughout time. It didn't uh, translate as this, but this is obviously what she thought this was going to be. And so there's this odd quality to this whole thing. She apparently pitched this to her church first, saying it was going to be like a religious angle, like Jesus was going to bring them together somehow. And then the once the church saw it had nothing to do with that, they pulled their funding. Oh, okay. <laughs> God. Thanks for answering my prayer. You don't need a god. I'm right here. A comedian by the name of Steven Kramer Glickman, uh, <laughs> who is much more famous now, he was hired on to do the voice of the dog in this film. <laughs> and uh, he was under the impression initially that this that was- he would get paid. That he would get paid. <laughs> what am I doing? How stupid am I? Uh, apparently he was also paid with like food. <laughs> like he wasn't paid anything for this. Some sort of favor. Maybe the director's really nice and got some favors from people. <laughs> you want dog food? Dude. Yeah, I'm a dog now. Genius. He was under the impression it was an animated film. It was not. He recorded an initial voiceover without the film having been made yet, uh, and it didn't fit anything. So he was brought in to re-record the lines just looking over the movie, and he quickly realized what he had. <laughs> I'm a dog and I don't know where to go Cause I'm a dog, I'm a dog, I'm a dog He just took the chance and ran with it, and uh, he's he's just making fun of the movie through the whole thing. Yeah, it's basically like someone <laughs> riffing on the movie occasionally. <laughs> Guess who's still covered in hair. Which is really weird because you get these super awkward scenes with people being weirdly invasive about other people's lives and stuff. Then you get this dog coming in like, wow, sure is green in here. This is stupid. <laughs> this is stupid. <laughs> 
<laughs> Sometimes he's really mean. He, he <laughs> Which is the, the best girl. part. <laughs> I was better looking than you. You have better intuition about people than I do. No, duh. He's completely separated from the dog as a human, because by the way, the dog becomes a human at some point. He's just making fun of her the whole time. This woman who's supposedly the love of his life. He calls her a pizza face <laughs> yeah. cinder block at one point. Because <laughs> like what? she runs into a pool and is like, oh, fine, I'll save you, you pizza face cinder block. How stupid. What kind of idiot doesn't know how to swim? You pizza face cinder block. She's like, done nothing to deserve this at this point. She's <laughs> trying to rescue him. Well, I mean, or, she no, did she's... marry her dog. <laughs> Because <laughs> they are married legally. by this point. Not legally. Not legally, but I don't know if they had know. a little ceremony in her apartment. I don't know if we've described this movie well at all. I don't no. think we've done a good job. <laughs> You're fired! I quit! It is so hard sometimes watching this movie because it's just like gives you whiplash with the cutting. Things happen like then people are shifted all over the place and it's like suddenly yeah. way later in the day and there's no indication that this is happening because it's just another cut. And you're like, oh, suddenly someone else is in the apartment or suddenly the situation's completely yeah. different. It has the attention span of a golden retriever. <laughs> oh yeah, staring at the parking lot. That's entertaining. The editing is atrocious. Uh, all the blocking is really bad. You got to kind of piece together what's happening in the movie. This is not clear at all. Here is what we have pieced together uh, from watching this a couple times now. There is a dog whose name is Alvin Flang. <laughs> <laughs> I already have a name. My name is Alvin Flang. Well, okay. What was the other name he said? Like, near Alvin the... Schwang? Alvin Schwang. Or Alvin Schwang, <laughs> unclear. I'm Alvin Schwang. <laughs> Also known yeah. as Prince. <laughs> the human version of him does not know his real name, though, because he just gets called Prince. I'm going to call you Prince. Uh, you mean like the artist formerly known as? Anyway, so there's a dog named Alvin Flang. He's running around a park silently for a while. And this is so confusing because, like, it does not explain to you at all that this dog used to be a human. You just have to kind of piece no, this together. He keeps, he keeps talking about gotta find a way to change. Uh, well, I, he talk, uh, he's, he's, he's talking about super, wanting horny. He's, he's horny. Super horny. <laughs> where are the ladies at, girls? Where are you? He's horny and homophobic. It should be noted. Yeah. I must stress, he is homophobic. Lay off, man. I'm not gay. This is a bad dog. This bad bad dog. dog. This dog is a terrible person. You're a bad dog. You are. You're a bad dog. What a loser. He's going around being horny and he's like, I gotta find a way to change back. Oh yeah, I'm a dog now. All this stuff where you're like, are, were you, are you... Not yeah, a dog before, you're just like, like what? <laughs> oh, look, I really am a dog. None of this is explained. You're just seeing this out of context uh, stream of consciousness. And eventually, a puddle talks to him. I love that the dog talks to the puddle first. He goes, like, yeah, hey, does... water pond, like, you don't know how I can change back, do you? Yeah, I didn't think so. You laughing at me, water pond? If you're smarter than me, tell me how to change. You don't know either. Until yeah. it starts having these dumb sparkly effects come out of it. Yeah, uh, <laughs> unclear if the puddle was maybe involved in this curse. He explains way too late into this movie that he was a man cursed to be a dog because he was a playboy. Mm -hmm. So he was a bad person initially. I was punished from being a cheating playboy. I could be your husband. It's kind of like Beauty and the Beast if it was really stupid and the Beast was her dog. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Beauty and the asshole. <laughs> yeah. You pizza face cinder block. I don't know what the deal with this pond is, but apparently it knows if he can find a woman that falls in love with him, he might have a chance to become a person again. So he just goes to like the first couple of ladies he sees in bathing suits at a Just park a for park. some reason. Yeah. This is uh, Lisa and her best friend, who I'm not sure has a name. Did they say her name? Paula's in the house. I think she had a name. <laughs> Wait, Paula. Pretty sure she had a name. <laughs> Paula's in the house. Anyway, her and Paula. <laughs> are uh, talking about guys and we find out that Lisa, which not a good time for Lisa's in these independent movies. <laughs> you gotta tear me apart, Lisa! We find out that Lisa's a virgin. She wants her to get together with someone. Uh, she's making fun of her. Waiting for virginity is so yesterday. Bingo! And this dog comes up and initially he's trying to get with the best friend. He thinks that she's hotter, but she gets with someone else. So he's like, I'll settle yeah. for you. Some voiceover <laughs> calls her off screen. Yeah. <laughs> hey, baby, what you doing? Ooh. Oh, too bad. 
Yeah, this dog proceeds to follow her around, try and get with her, try and trick her. Like, I think he does injure himself, unless he somehow got fake blood on himself. I'm not sure. I cut myself shaving. Yeah, <laughs> I think he, yeah, he does this on purpose, so she'll yeah. take him in. Yeah, yeah, he does it on purpose. Yeah. I'm just not trying to figure out oh, with his paw whether there's a real injury. <laughs> I guess he, he's just going around ambulance chasing or whatever. I gotta do anything I can to get back inside her heart-shaped box. A lot of bad things in this movie, but the music. <laughs> yeah, I've seen conflicting reports about the music. There is no scoring in this, distractingly so. There was clearly meant to be a score. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I read said that one of the editors accidentally deleted it. Another thing said that there was an initial release with scoring, and then when they did it on streaming, they didn't have the rights to it. But I, I don't know if I believe that one because the DVD we have, which might have been a later release, doesn't have any of the music on it. But unless they were doing a bunch of licensed music, uh, I don't know why that would be an issue mm -hmm. bringing it to streaming. So uh, unclear yeah, what's happened. Possible, yeah. She just used a bunch of music she couldn't really use, and they're like, uh, we have to take that yeah, out. Yeah, <laughs> maybe she released it with music she did not get clearance for. Where is everybody? There's clearly meant to be scoring. Um, yeah, because it's just a lot silent of... in the beginning. Like, you see this dog dinking around a park to complete silence. Like, there's no background noise, they have muted audio. It's super awkward because it's it's like silent or like sped up, like you're watching an, an old silent film at a different film rate. <laughs> mm -hmm. Which happens a few times in this movie. They speed it up to yeah. be like a Benny Hill sketch or something. A lot of scenes are also made much more creepy than they are, mm -hmm. and they're already creepy because they're just silent. Like, there's yeah. scenes where they're making out in bed, maybe having sex. There's scenes where they're talking to you, like you see her at one point come up and say something to a dog, no audio. What are you doing? Very awkward. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> this place, bro. Just a series of odd characters. So Lisa is a very strange woman. Lisa is a, a virgin, which is not a problem, but she is surrounded just by predators. Just a mm -hmm. bunch of predators. Every man in this Including her mother and her neighbor, <laughs> question mark, aunt, whoever this woman is. Yeah. Lisa seems to like this very ugly color of green that she wears throughout the whole film. Her apartment mm -hmm. is, is painted yeah, this entire underwear. green. Her underwear is this green. <laughs> the director is clearly trying to do some sort of color theory without understanding color theory. <laughs> Because everyone's got their assigned colors. The dog is this beige outfit like that he wears all the time. I want the house to have my hair color, not all green. Ew. But yeah, there's like all of this green color that Lisa really loves, and uh, Alvin Flang continually makes dunks at throughout the film. <laughs> Why is everything in here green? Hey, this one's also tacky. Maybe you should wear more green. <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna get, another green thing? <laughs> Don't spend it on green clothes! <laughs> <gasps> Don't spend it all on green clothing. I love how much this dog that's supposedly in love with her and needs her to be in love with him so he turns human, like, hates her. <laughs> You're buying. I'd rather kill myself. You pizza face cinder block. He hates Lisa and he he's just using her to oh, try and I become hate Lisa human. So much. The, I'm risking my life for green pants. <laughs> the puddle immediately knows he's just using her because he's just like, what the fuck, man? I was a human and then I turned into a dog again. And then it's like, you're just using her. You get to be a dog uh, at, at night. Mm, or you get to no, be no. a human at night and a dog during the day until like, you find true love or he's whatever. He's like, yeah, I'll <laughs> love her. <laughs> In bed. In bed. <laughs> I'll feel love. In bed. It's one of the funniest fucking movies I've ever seen. <laughs> it reminds me of um, that Who Killed Captain Alex film with like the comedy track. This is serious. Everybody in Uganda must kung fu. Uganda. Sometimes it's funny, like genuinely, because it's like it, like a mystery science theater type riff. Sometimes it's funny because there is absolutely no art or class to any of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How about being my roommate? You pay the rent and I'll sniff my butt. I think my favorite line from him is when the dog sits down and he goes, my ass. <laughs> my ass. <laughs> ah, my ass. I love he's just like kind of riffing to on the dog's doing. Oh, I don't know what I'm gonna do. He goes walk under some tables, eat some garbage. <laughs> 
Maybe I should just be alone. Walk under tables, eat garbage out of the trash can. Like, this dog is a big creeper, but compared to everyone else in this movie, the dog's probably one of the least worst predators. Yeah. Ow! Hey, you bit my best friend! She was playing with my face! Get out! There's this guy that gets with Lisa, who is not a predator, but is using her also, because mm -hmm. it turns out that he's gay. He wants to use her, like, as a, as a sham, as a beard marriage. <laughs> he doesn't tell her this, though. Like, they date for a bit, oh, yeah, and oh, then he yeah. pops the question and goes, and by the way, it's okay if you date other men. No, wait, I mean, it's okay if you screw other men, because I'm gay and I don't love you and you're not attractive. <laughs> you can sleep with anyone you like. I don't mean to be rude, but I'm not physically attracted to you. Will you marry me? I think you're super <laughs> ugly and I'm using you. And anyway, you want to get together? <laughs> this is the best way to drop this on her. <laughs> I love her reaction to this. She's like, it's going to be a pass, Kyle. <laughs> and she starts weeping and she's like, why is he gay? Why, yeah. why did he have to be gay? <laughs> why is he gay? Why is Kyle gay? <laughs> didn't even seem like she's that into him before because wasn't she telling her friend like oh i like him more like a friend yeah. but then she's super bummed <laughs> when he, she finds out he's gay it's like actually i did want him like I she didn't... just wanted what she couldn't have <laughs> she was settling was the thing she, settling she's like i'm not gonna find anyone else unless maybe <laughs> unless like, like a dog, a dog. <laughs> a dog magically becomes a human otherwise <laughs> i gotta go for this co-worker that i'm not really that into i love what sparks their relationship is her coming in like they work at a clothing store which they didn't uh pay to film in so yeah. they just sneak into this clothing store to film scenes constantly but there's this woman who's changing in the middle of the store not a changing room oh yeah yeah <laughs> they had a comedy fart noise so you know you should you should laugh and mock her <laughs> no it's because i'm sweaty <sighs> <laughs> but she's like having a bit of trouble getting into this dress, but she still wants it. And then Lisa comes over and she's like, I can't sell you this dress because you're too fat for it. Yeah. I'm sorry, this dress is too tight for you. I can't sell that to you. What? What a jerk. She's like, this is too tight. You can't, I can't sell this to you. And even the manager's like, dude, just sell her the dress. And also it's not even that tight on her. They no. added a fake butt, but even that seems to fit mm -hmm. fine in this dress. But that's when her coworkers like, I like your way better. What? Lying, lying so he can get the sham of a yeah. marriage on the way. I, I like your way of telling the customers they're too large to buy the clothes and you won't allow it. <laughs> This is ridiculous. This is the introduction of many important characters to this film because also her boss is a sexual predator yep. <laughs> who tries to attack her later. He just breaks into her apartment. Yeah, and then that's the end of that job. She goes to a similar clothing store with really ugly yeah, clothes. It's the end of him as a character too. The dog shoes him off. He's just like, all right. No, the dog like attacks him. Yeah, it's, they well, have a very I mean, awkward it attack attacks him. <laughs> 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 and then he just goes, you're fired, and then he kind of leaves the movie. We'll be a chihuahua. <laughs> the dog does not do this for chivalrous reasons. He's just no. like, back off, I gotta become a human again. Yeah. I, I can't work I on any other her. lady. She's the only one dumb enough for this to work. <laughs> <laughs> Now I'm the king of the castle. King of the castle! And lives in a house that is green. What is that about? I mean, it's true though, like how many women are gonna fall in love with their dogs like no. that? He Only found the one. Dog. He found the one. <laughs> she is the one. Oh honey, look But they also introduce in that scene, the woman with the big butt and the fart noise. <sighs> I think she has a dog food company. At the very least, she is arranging oh. a commercial for dog food. Yeah, it's like some dog talent agency or something. Well, she, no, they... she's hired the talent agency for oh. her dog food commercial. Okay, okay. Unclear if she uh, owns the food company or if she is just arranging this commercial. Either way, she's working with a talent agent who is showing her all these dogs. And she's like, no, no, can't do it. These dogs suck ass. And he's like, wait a minute. I saw a dog in a clothing store pick out a skirt for a lady. He is the most talented dog I've ever seen. Oh, get me the I, dog! Yeah, I need that dog. Do not rest till you find me that dog. She doesn't know what kind of dog this is. She doesn't know what no. it looks like. She's, she's just like, get me that skirt finding dog. I know that he will be able to fight ninjas in a commercial. And Which she is was like totally China right. Which is like China girl dog food or something. It's yeah. A really weird name. <laughs> It was not a very well shot commercial. Kind of looked like the rest of this movie. <laughs> <laughs> On an even worse camera. This is a, a, 
a very weird subplot in this movie. So at this point, Alvin Flang has revealed himself as a guy who turns into a dog sometimes, but he was a human that was cursed. They're in a relationship. I think they are married at this point, wow. but it's a sham marriage because he has no ID. So they just married themselves, but I guess they're married. <laughs> like with these really creepy low light pictures, that's yeah. their marriage. <laughs> it, was, it was super creepy, but they're married. And then the puddle's like, well, you got to provide for your wife now. And he's like, how the fuck am I supposed to do yeah. that? I'm a fucking dog man. You made it no a little identity. hard for me being a dog by um, day. I have to provide for my wife. I also have questions how old this dog is. Is he much older than he claims to be? Because he was once a man and then he became a dog, but he has to be aged out of his former identity, right? Otherwise, why wouldn't he just go back to who he was before he became a dog? Yeah, we have no idea how long this guy's been roaming the earth as a dog. Maybe he was cursed as an immortal dog. I don't know. <laughs> no, he's not like, immortal. <laughs> well, I mean, he, he wouldn't age, I guess. He's just stuck as a dog. <laughs> Okay, so the subplot with the talent agency. He's gonna provide for his wife. So he just shows up as the dog and then they work with him like, hello dog, nice to meet you. Here's your paycheck, dog. Yeah, they give the paycheck to the dog. They never meet his owner at any point. They just give him money, go on your way, dog. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he buys like a dress for Lisa, one of these puke green dresses that she <laughs> loves. And then she's just like, where'd you get the money? Where'd you get the money? You stole it, didn't you? You where'd stole you get it, the money, yeah. Jenny? <laughs> yeah, she just goes into tears several times in this movie. She thinks that he's a thieving liar, uh, but he's like, all I can do is commercials and stuff. She sees that commercial later and he's like, ah, now it is time for you to know that I fight karate. He sings a song about it. That, yeah. That she fi he fights karate men. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for you to know Where are you going? I fight crime with ninjas. When he first turns into a human too, and they're in a park at night, and then he's just a naked guy standing there. He's like, no. <laughs> Oh, I was your dog. Yeah, yeah, it's me, Prince. You know, your dog? That's me. Can we get married? I guess. <laughs> that seems okay. What is Lisa's deal? What's wrong with her? I mean, she's very messed up. I mean, possibly from just being surrounded by a bunch of weirdos. <laughs> <laughs> Including her friend, too. It's like, her friend at oh, first yeah, yeah. seems sort of normal, besides them, you know, going in their swimsuits in the park. She's just going like, oh yeah, and you need to get out there and be dating or something. But then her friend comes over later and finds Prince in her bedroom and she throws a fit. She's yeah. like, you lied to me! You lied to me! You son of a bitch! Yeah, she turns into Chris Farley in that fake coffee commercial. <laughs> massive overreaction to this for no reason whatsoever of finding this naked man. She has a boyfriend over and then she's just like, you would have told me about this. It's terrible. It's like she wanted to be with Lisa too like because everyone in this movie wants Lisa except the dog when he's a dog. No. And calling her a pizza face cinder block. <laughs> you pizza face cinder block. There's even some barb shredder in the movie, not just in the voiceover, because like her meddling friend Rita, when she comes over to investigate her boyfriend Prince, she's like, oh, yeah. how could someone as handsome of you be in love with someone as plain as Lisa? It's like, Something's up. Handsome men like you with plain sales girl like Lisa. What's that? <laughs> like this is her friend or family who knows <laughs> unclear who rita is maybe, maybe her I'm... mom's girlfriend they, <laughs> they seem mom... awfully chummy in the bed in one scene <laughs> her mom's girlfriend or friend or sister we don't know who she's supposed to be but she's nosy as fuck it's quite ironic all this stuff like no one believes that these two will get together but in real life the actors met on this set yeah. and got married and had kids they're yeah. still together <laughs> there was a love story in here <laughs> something good came out of this monstrosity it wasn't the the film but yeah <laughs> something came out of it you ever think they tell their kids the story like about how they met did they ever show them the film you got to you can find love in the strangest places even making a terrible movie <laughs> <laughs> it sounds crazy but it's true yeah. <laughs> luckily our relationship is nothing like that. <laughs> i hope not <sighs> 
completely disparate worlds that the human and the dog Alvin Flang are mm. living in. The guy who plays Prince in human form, he is trying to convey that there is some sort of sincere love story going on. I wouldn't say the acting spectacular, but he's trying. But clearly, the dog Alvin Flang is just dunking on the movie the entire time. He's in mm. a comedy movie. He doesn't give a single mm. fuck. <laughs> hey! Four Legs is here, you pizza face cinder block. It's really strange to, like, Lisa becomes unreasonable about things with the dog man, because she's, like, asking him to come out, like, oh, can you, you know, do this thing with me during the day? He's like, no, I can't. I'll be a dog then. She, if you really loved me, you would do this. He has an excuse. He's a dog. He's a dog. <laughs> I think if you call in dog to work, he's not going to be called in. <laughs> Except for him, he was a dog at work. He can only be a dog at work. Yeah, that's how he's making all that money. Yeah. <gasps> Don't spend it all on green clothing. So he agrees to go to her new boss's dinner party. Mm. This is at another similar clothing store. Looks a lot like the same store in a different part of it. It kind of does. <laughs> so he agrees to go to this, I guess it's a lunch get together. It's not a dinner party, but it's during the day outside. But if it's cloudy, he's fine. Then couldn't you just be inside? Yeah, and also be a dog if just blocking the sun, or also be yeah. a human if blocking the sun keeps you human. They've had no testing of the Siri either. She just goes, it's cloudy today. I think you should be okay to not be a dog. But he was human when they looked outside, so I think she was demonstrating was. that. But I think it was morning, because I think he has a little bit of time in the morning before he dogs out. I don't know. She says, like, it, there's if rain's predicted for this day... <laughs> Uh -huh. Then we'll go out and do that. So they go to this dinner party. This is a strange party that they're at. It's <laughs> this a guy, party where the father wants to chastise his kids for not falling in the, the clothing like, business. <laughs> I own five shitty thrift stores. Yeah. What are you, a stupid doctor? Yeah. I don't think so. Now we have more than five stores, but the family doesn't seem interested in that. I'm a medical doctor. I want to be a movie star. Hey, look at how handsome her boyfriend is. You could learn a lot from him, son. <laughs> Isn't he handsome, darling? Yes, he is handsome and well-mannered. Sam, you need to learn from Prince. Rub against him, see if some of that handsomeness will come off on you. This sounds weird, too. He's just like, I want to be a movie star. Yeah. <laughs> What's his personality? So he's having a conversation with Alvin Flang at one point. A silent mm. conversation. And of course, the sun comes out. Alvin Flang has plenty of time to react to this. He's staring up mm -hmm. at the clouds parting yeah. in what is clearly already day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like it's a bright, sunshiny day. And then he turns into a dog. And then the guy's reaction is just like, Dad, Prince just turned into a dog. <laughs> Dad, Prince just became a dog. Big deal. I'm Alvin Flang. <laughs> And then Lisa starts freaking out. She jumps into the pool she for no reason. She just kind of runs into it. She's yeah. like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> then Alvin Flang proceeds to complain that he has to rescue her. <laughs> That's when the best line happens. <laughs> you pizza face cinder block. And then rescues her. They fade away. No one else ever has any questions about the fact this guy turned into a dog. We never see or hear from these characters again. I guess the boss was <laughs> fine with that. It's like, oh, yeah, sometimes you date a dog, I guess. Whatever. We're see, not at work him. tomorrow. He's less judgy than her mom and her girlfriend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mom is so terrible. The There's... mom's introduction, it was like psycho. She calls on the phone and she's sitting in the shadows like they're gonna reveal she's a fucking corpse. Yeah, like I have to imagine, like there was some serious horror music playing when you saw this mother in the shot like when Why? there was a score at one point. You should date four or five guys at the same time. Not just two. Very scary. I don't care how many people you date. You can date as many, but you need to marry them basically immediately or I'm going to be mad and She's got... die or something. Like, I will will myself to death oh, if yeah. you don't marry someone she immediately. She pretends that her health is bad at one point to try and trick her. And also Rita does it. They're not above <laughs> pretending to be ill to trick them. She's clearly projecting some issues onto her daughter because her husband left her. Not even husband. Her fiance and they were gonna get married at the clerk's office and he just never showed up like he left <laughs> yeah because they don't tell anyone they had their little apartment marriage so like their mother and Rita yeah. so like yeah well, you two are gonna go out and get married they've immediately. just met this man yeah. and then they're just like so when are you gonna get married how about we go to the clerk's office right now well tomorrow I think tomorrow was, so. you better meet us at the clerk even if he wasn't a dog he should have been out of there. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> so weird. Creepy. <laughs> 
Prince and Lisa talk about this. He's like, well, I can't make it because I'm going to be a dog then. Oh, yeah, I guess that's not going to work out. Yeah. But then they go well, they anyway. They point out that he doesn't have an ID. Mm -hmm. so he couldn't yeah, he has no, no real ID. I'm sorry that you're involved with a man that doesn't even have a birth certificate. <sighs> Lisa shows up the next day at the courthouse for some reason. And then her mother and Rita proceed to get angry at her. Be like, where is he, huh? You idiot. Oh, he's not going to marry you? You loser. This is all your fault, Lisa. I knew you'd screw this up. It's no wonder she turned out into this weird green monster. <laughs> Ideal husband would have been Oscar the Grouch. <laughs> Maybe she'd get him to wear some dog ears. <laughs> <laughs> this is ridiculous. Well, there's one part too we got to mention where they put a stupid fake tail on oh, yeah. <laughs> the guy because Rita, in one of her weird nosy things, is chasing him around, asking him for IDs and stuff, yeah. and he runs out of the apartment into some public bathroom. <laughs> this is the only time they kind of do this werewolf-ish transformation where he's got a crappy little dog tail. On. That's Hollywood magic. They probably borrowed that from some furry that they knew or something. Yeah. Like, can we borrow this tail, please? And he's like, oh, I see him turn into a dog. Like, oh, did you? Well, he went to the bathroom of a man and then he came out as a dog. So I don't know. Very blase about that. I mean, uh, well, she says... Maybe. She says that's the only way she can think of to explain. I don't mm -hmm. think she truly believes he turned into a dog. Yeah, and that's what I don't I... think her family ever knows he was a dog man even though like, yeah. those other people could have told them this is when rita gets really evil too <laughs> because like she tells lisa you gotta break up with them and lisa's like no and then she's like okay well if you're not gonna listen to me i'm out of your life and so is your mother yeah and then <laughs> they were did they ever come back to her life? I think her mother is dying on her bed trying to get her to date again or something in one scene. Well, we know that her mom and Rita are, are skeletons by the end of the movie. Yeah. I wonder where I can get some doggy Prozac. Other people are like this too because the creeper at the clothing store, he just kind of like peeks over some clothing at one point at Lisa. And oh, yeah, then he yeah. like pretends he has a wife to buy some women's clothing yeah. as an excuse. And then for some reason, Rita Rita knows this guy, and no, she's like, "They set it up. They set, they the, set, they it, set up. it up for Whoa, him to go that in was there smooth. and do that. What a great play yeah. that was! A real great plan. Well, these two came up with. <laughs> apparently, it got him a date because he, who also mm. has mother issues, right, mother? Of course, Frank. Yes, mother. Okay, mother. Yes, mother. Norman, there's no one there. Yes, mother. Has a date with Lisa and his mom, yeah. but his mom is too into like dieting and stuff. <laughs> His mom also says, like, he already has a son or something. She's like, he's his son's going to be the president, and we have to make sure he has no more kids, so you have to have your tubes tied. And, like, this is the first time she's met his mom. And to be certain that he grows up to become president, she must agree to have her tubes tied before the marriage. I guess yeah. that was the end of that relationship. Yeah, she just meets On a series dogs. of psychopaths and then decides, well, I guess my dog. From now on, no more men. I'm going to stay with you. Because that's when he turns into a man. Like, she's just like, from now on, you're the only man in my life because everyone else is a fucking creep. So I guess I'll just be with my dog. And then he's like, bling. Yeah. And I think even the guy voicing over him just goes like, shablamo or something when he turns into a man. <laughs> Shabang! deep psychological torture going on with Lisa in this movie. Yeah, this spans over a, a series of, I mean, it spans her entire life, but unclear how many years this is supposed to be. It's supposed to take place over a span of time. We know this because throughout the first half of the movie, Lisa has these terrible hair extensions <laughs> added to her hair. And I was trying to figure out, I'm like, is this just like what she wanted her hair to look like? This is really weird because there's clearly her shorter hair on top and then this like, differently styled hair underneath. But apparently this is something that the director added to show that some time has passed because she cuts it at some point. Yeah, it's just suddenly shorter later, which is, I guess, to show time passed, which is You can is only great. guess. Yeah, <laughs> you have no idea <laughs> why anything happens in this movie. You can't be a full-time husband. At least you could give me a wonderful boy like you. No, no, no. At some point, these two have sex, right? <laughs> yeah. They yeah. have sex. Creepy <laughs> sex. <laughs> yeah, they have creepy sex. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Did she ever have sex with him as the dog? <laughs> I'm just saying, we can't eliminate this as a possibility. In, In bed. bed. <laughs> I'll feel love. 
in bed. You feel like there's supposed this is to be a story. He calls her a, a pizza face cinder block, yeah. by the way. He does that after they've had all these romantic scenes. Pizza face cinder block. <laughs> yeah, pizza face cinder block. It seems like the movie at one point is setting up that, you know, kind of like Beauty and the Beast that this guy's got to learn to actually become a better person. Yeah, be a better person, actually open up his heart and stuff. But it just kind of screeches to a halt and doesn't finish that story and then just becomes its own weird thing at the end. Yeah, well, he decides that this isn't going to work out for them. It doesn't seem like it's very good. And so he says, <laughs> what needs to happen is I need to die. And if, if I die... You can't take me at a dog. You don't deserve me at my prince. <laughs> <laughs> I need to find a bitch of my own. So he's like, if I die, I'll be reincarnated, so it'll be fine. He mentions this for no reason whatsoever, because later he decides he's just going to leave her. He turns into a dog. He's left her a note saying, you deserve a better life. Yeah, I'm going to head anamorph somehow. Yeah, and so he seems to, like he's just ready to live the rest of his dog life out until uh, he realizes, with the assistance of the puddle, I believe, that he does love this woman. So he runs back, but as he's running back, uh-oh. Car hits so many dice. <laughs> um, and you would think that would just be a signal for he's gonna become a man or or whatever, something magical is gonna happen. No. Cut to she is an old woman. <laughs> well, she's a woman with some powder in her hair. Some powder in her hair, but Lisa's supposed to be an old woman. I'm an old woman now. Not Super clear. Super unclear at first. Not clear initially because the lighting's so dark, you can't even see the no. minimal old age makeup job that they'd done. And it's the same and, with her friend because she shows up at the apartment and, yeah. like, at first I had no idea that she was supposed to be older. <laughs> no, she just shows up because the apartment's put up for rent. The friend shows up with a bunch of kids and then they start talking about how, like, oh, yeah, I didn't know you still lived here. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, grandma, grandma. And it's like, yeah, all right, sure. <laughs> Did they not talk ever since that one day she found Prince in her bedroom? No. <laughs> <laughs> that was the end of the friendship. And then she just sat as an old crone and never never connected to anyone else. She just sat in the window going, like, it never got better than Alvin Flang. She has all these pictures up of her and Alvin Flang. She has a scrapbook with mm -hmm. the dog in it. Yeah. <laughs> she's an old woman and she's like, I always knew Alvin Flang was going to come back. Prince is going to come back. I don't think she ever knew he was named Alvin Flang. No, even though he's no, because it's only on the dog, dog that knew that. I already have a name. My name is Alvin Flang. <laughs> Prince, should I know he's going to come back and then he'll be our age and then her friend's like no if he was reincarnated he would be the age like from where he started then they seem just sure of this yeah and her friend didn't even know anything about this magic dog boyfriend until right now and she's like yeah i think oh, i know honey. how this works honey you're an yeah. idiot this Look, is how I magic mean, puddle dog boyfriends she, work okay <laughs> i mean if reincarnation works the way that i understand it you're you're born as a baby but a, yeah. your soul is in in something else reborn. yeah if it's how so, reincarnation Incarnation he supposedly been born, works. Yeah, so he would have been born when the dog died and then age up from there. And so, do to do, look what happens. Uh, our renter shows up. So mm. he shows up and it's just Alvin Flang in a wig. <laughs> <laughs> and he suddenly remembers her. Turns into an old man, so he is now the age that he would have been if he hadn't died. And then they decide to get married, but then they're young again. <laughs> now I'll tell you, that doesn't make a lick of sense. I know. It's super <laughs> unclear, too, if he's supposed to have remembered her at all during his new life. He's just kind of like, yeah, I know, I was like doing stuff with dogs, I guess. I always felt like there's something empty in my life. I guess it was you. Yeah, I don't know. Did he lose his dog business? Did she become young, but legally she's like 80-something years old? Their lives are fucked. <laughs> <laughs> go into hiding after this. We should call the Wambulance. What the fuck was this movie? <laughs> it was Love on a Leash. Oh! I'm a dog now. Uh, what can I say about Love on a Leash? This is one of the most baffling movies I've ever seen. I've seen a lot of bad movies. We have watched a lot of bad movies, but mm -hmm. this is truly baffling. And there's so many different layers to it. Like, it's just, it's kind of fascinating. Yeah, like you said, it does go into that Neil Breen-esque mode sometimes where you're just like, what is going on? Because <laughs> it just cuts around and you're just like... <laughs> Yeah. Makes sense. There's one part where it's just like Lisa is sad and kind of leaning against the wall. It fades to ducks, fades back to her still on that wall. <laughs> still kind of like sliding down. Like, yeah. What was that? Even with music, that would be confusing. 
I, I feel like there's a lot of creative editing choices, a lot of things left up to interpretation, a lot of things lost in translation, because I think some things were meant to mean something, but the only person who knows what they mean is the director. <laughs> or Alvin Flang. Alvin Flang. <laughs> only Alvin Flang knows. I'm Alvin Flang. Would you recommend this movie to anyone? <laughs> You have to be ready for a really weird ride and with no music. You need to prepare yourself. It's an entertaining bad movie, especially with the dog kind of riffing on it. So yes, but get ready to be very confused by some of the editing choices. <laughs> this is So Bad It's Good on hard mode. So if you're an advanced student of So Bad It's Good movies, a chef's kiss. You know, like it, it's unlike any other movie I've seen. I don't mm -hmm. know if I'll see another movie like like it so i'd recommend yeah. it <laughs> you said it kind of has an element of a lot of bad movies we've watched before but yeah it kind of combined into one i guess <laughs> crazy times anyway <laughs> that's it watch love on a leash <laughs> pizza face cinder block <laughs> see alvin flying for yourself <laughs> bye <laughs>